Hi guys, Virtus Education here with episode 9 of the CryEngine 3 STK Begin Tutorial Series. And in this episode, we're going to be dedicating it to vegetation. So as of right now, we've done quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of stuff in our level. However, it is quite empty. So in this episode, we're going to be adding in some, uh, objects and content into our scene in the form of, uh, you know, mass used objects such as foliage, rocks, and so on and so forth. So if you take a quick look at my scene I've put in a little bit of foliage quickly so you can see what the vegetation tool can do. So in this little scene here you can see we've, I've got some trees that are swaying and I've got some grass which is also swaying and I've also got lots and lots and lots of it. Now if I was to go ahead and try and place each and every single one of these uh, pieces of grass individually, it would take me a long time. However, CryEngine actually offers us a tool to add in vegetation and other mass, uh, mass used objects in really quickly and play around with a bunch of different settings for it. Uh, if you want an example in, say, Unreal Development Kit, we've got the foliage mode. This is essentially a uh, foliage mode on crack. We get a whole bunch of different settings that we can play around with uh, more than UDK provides. So let's just go ahead and get started. So what I'm going to do here quickly is I'm going to uh, scrap this. Uh, I'm going to open up the level again with no foliage. So before you do start adding in your foliage, it's good to have some kind of rough uh, texturing pass on the terrain uh, so that you can see uh, where you want your vegetation and other objects to go. For example, you don't want your uh, trees to be in the middle of the paths or your grass to be in the middle of the paths, um, you know, rocks to be in the paths and so on and so forth. So what I've got here in my level, uh, the tutorial level that we've been creating throughout the series so far, is essentially just my terrain and some very, very, very rough uh, textures on here. So here's a little area that I showed you previously. It's essentially just a little uh, lake thing uh, with some rivers coming out of it. So it's time to populate this area with some content. So to use the vegetation tool, just go ahead and go over to vegetation. And then from here, uh, sorry, uh, over here in the terrain tab, go to vegetation. So before we can start creating any kind of object, we need to add in some kind of category just for the sake of organization. So you will have a whole bunch of different types of objects, so you will need categories to organize your foliage uh, so you can play around with the settings properly, properly, you can find them, you can turn them on and off properly, and, you know, just I don't need to talk about it. Organization just really speeds up things and it's definitely something that you're going to need in the vegetation tool. So to create a new category, uh, just go ahead and right click in the objects panel and go to add category. So these categories are going to be things for like grass, trees, rocks and so on and so forth. So to start off with I'm going to go ahead and create a new category for grass. Now inside of this I'm going to go ahead and create a new vegetation object which will be painting. So to add some kind of object which you want to paint onto your terrain, you know, trees, grass, whatever, you're going to need to add a new vegetation object. So to do that, just go ahead and select one. So by default, you may actually be brought to uh, the uh, main root folder of the CryEngine 3 SDK installation. So to get to the objects, just go ahead and go to Game SDK, go to Objects. And then just go ahead and go to natural and whatever you want to or wherever you've imported stuff if you've got custom stuff to go into here. So as I said previously, this uh, group is going to be for grass. So I'm just going to go ahead and select grass and then select a nice dense piece of grass which we can add onto the terrain. So whenever you're selecting an object, don't forget that you've got this little preview over here uh, which we can use to see what it looks like. <coughs> so, from here, 
we can just go ahead and press open it up uh, go ahead and open it up uh, don't forget you can also see some of the information about this such as uh, materials LODs uh, and so on and so forth so let's go ahead and open this up and then select it and then we can actually start painting this onto our terrain so we can actually paint this without playing around with any of the settings uh, to do this just go ahead and press paint objects make sure uh, that the grass or whatever it is you're trying to paint is selected uh, along with paint objects and then just go ahead and paint it's just as simple as holding down left click and then painting onto the terrain now you can play around with the brush radius a little bit so if you want to be more precise just go ahead and make it nice and small however if you want to cover large areas really quickly you know just turn up that brush radius simple as that now, I just want you guys to keep in mind that you can actually place individual uh, vegetation objects uh, by themselves. So you don't have to uh, worry about uh, adding in lots and lots uh, through the brush. So to do that, it's simply uh, just a matter of selecting it, and then holding down shift, and then uh, click. Sorry, one second. Uh, whenever you're doing that, you've got to make sure that you do not have paint objects selected. Otherwise, it will do it as per normal. So hold down shift, click, and then just boom, you'll have your one individual object. This will allow you to be really, really precise. So, for example, if you've got a small area like a, a little corner here where you don't want lots, uh, where you don't want a bunch, uh, sorry, a whole bunch of trees, or you know, you might just want the one, you could do it like this. So just go ahead and keep that in mind. So now I've shown you how to uh, paint in your vegetation as a group and individually. Let's just go ahead and play around with some of the settings that we have with it. Now we've got a whole bunch of different settings that we can play around with here. However, I'm only going to go over the ones that are really, really important. Those ones being the size, the size variation, random rotation, line to terrain, bending, hideable, uh, density, elevation and slope, LOD, and max view distance. <coughs> Okay, so let's start off with uh, one of the most important ones, that being size. So size is pretty much self-explanatory. This essentially allows you to define how tall uh, your objects are going to be when you paint them. So by default, they are just uh, multiplied by 1. However, if I was to go ahead and change this multiplier by, uh, to 5, uh, we would have some really extra large grass. Now, whenever you're playing around with size, just make sure that you press Control g get in there and play with it uh, for a size reference. As you can see right now, it's too big, unproportionate, and so on and so forth, which is going to be no good. So, you know, you're going to have to change that to something like 2, 3, or whatever. Also, we have some uh, variation settings. Uh, for example, size variation. This essentially allows you to make any objects painted onto your level uh, to vary in size. So, for example, let's just set the size to, say, 2 and then made the size variation to 3, we would see that we get variation in size in our assets going from say 2 to about 5 as you can see here. Now, the reason for using a uh, varied height is simply for the sake of making it less repetitive. People will really notice this with things like rocks, trees, and larger assets. Not something you really need to worry about with small uh, grass. We've also got random rotation. This essentially just rotates uh, the object uh, randomly to eliminate repetitiveness. The next setting we've got is align to terrain. This essentially just aligns any vegetation to the terrain. So for example, on my riverbanks here, if I was to do it, you can see it bends and only goes on the terrain. You know, it snaps to it. So, having said that, it won't just float above the terrain uh, like you wouldn't want it to. Instead, it will curve realistically. You may see a little overhang uh, with some of the larger assets. But, for example, if I just go ahead and have this at 1, you'll see it will curve around the terrain as it should do. So, the next setting we need to go over is bending. Bending is a quite, quite the awesome feature. It essentially allow, uh, makes your uh, objects turn into a physics asset and then bend in the wind so from for example here you can see it's swaying 
when I set it to 15. If I, for example, set it to 0, it's static, which is the default. It does not move. However, if I was to go ahead and set it to something like 35, it's going crazy, it's swinging in the wind. What this does is it essentially just changes it into a physics asset and then just do some kind of bend multiplier to it. <coughs> Sorry, multi uh, modifier. So it's pretty much uh, uh, it's a really good tool to make your scene look a little bit more lively. It works really, really well with trees and uh, you know other kind of objects which would normally blow in the wind. Now, just keep in mind that you can actually uh, change the strength of the wind uh, globally uh, through the environment settings, which I will show you in a separate video. So next uh, we've got hideable. Uh, hi the hideable settings essentially just allow us to check whether or not uh, a player or AI can hide inside of these objects. So for example if I was to run inside of this grass here with player hideable selected it would uh, stop any AI seeing me. I would just be completely out of their line of sight. Now we've got two different settings for this hideable. Uh, this is just for AI whereas player is you know for the player. So if hideable for the AI was selected but it wasn't for player hideable, then the AI would be able to hide in it, however the player would not. So the next setting uh, is uh, density. This essentially just allows us how uh, dense we want our objects to be. So for example, if you want it to be really sparse and you don't, and you just want a few little bits of it uh, chucked around, then you would just make it. <coughs> sorry about that, then you would just give it a relatively low density. Whereas if you want it to be really cluttered, full up of foliage for example, then you would turn that density up nice and high. Just play around with that to get the uh, the right point at which it works for you. You've also got to keep in mind that the higher the density, the, uh, the worse of the performance will be. But we do have a couple of settings for that, which I'll go over in just a minute. We've also got elevation and slope, which essentially just allow us to uh, make our vegetation only apply to certain elevations or slope. Now, there is a tool, something similar to this in the terrain editor, which allows you to, not the terrain editor, sorry, the layer painter, which essentially allows you to only paint on a certain height or elevation. So I'm going to go ahead and give you an example of that. So, for example, on the slope, uh, on the minimum, I'm going to set this to something like 50. So it will only be applied uh, where there's uh, a slope of, uh, sorry, where there isn't a slope of anything more than 50, as you can see here. Just play around with that and uh, see what you can get. I probably said that wrong, but fundamentally, it only really applies to... Uh, whatever threshold you set it to here uh, through the minimum and maximum for both slope and elevation. If you want more practice with this just go ahead and play around with the layer painter and you can see what you can do from there. And lastly we've got the two performance related settings uh, those being LOD distance ratio and max view distance ratio. So for example uh, if you're going to have loads and loads of vegetation objects in your scene, performance is going to be quite an issue. So, for example, if I just go over here to my foliage, you can see we've got 800,000 polygons being rendered into the scene, which is not too good for performance. You can see I'm only getting around 40 frames per second. Uh, CryEngine does have uh, a bunch of settings you can play around with for this uh, to help out performance-wise. So let's go over those. So LOD distance ratio essentially allows you to define um, the uh, the the distance, uh, sorry, how much the uh, the level of detail is decreased uh, when you get far away from it. So, for example, as I move backwards and forwards away from this little mountain here, you can see the level of detail uh, gets higher as you get closer, you know. So, for example, as the stand here, it's really detailed, whereas if I get back and, you know, you don't really need to see it in detail, that detail sort of goes away. And then we've also got max view distance, which essentially just uh, changes the distance at which uh, things go away and uh, stop being rendered entirely. So, for example, if it was to have a whole bunch of trees all the way back here, you know, 
it just wouldn't render them because you wouldn't be able to see them anyway and just helps out with performance so that's pretty much all the settings uh, that you need to uh, you need to know for this so if you want any more information about all of these settings uh, feel free to look them up if you did not understand what I said in this video feel free to go ahead and rewatch it as you so please so I'm just going to go ahead and quickly paint some grass into this scene so you can see the usual workflow that I go through whenever I'm, uh, you know, working with vegetation objects. I just do a quick, very easy uh, brush through with... Um uh, some of this however you know I may get a little bit of overhang like this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete some of this so delete it just go ahead and control and hold down control left click and that will delete it I did not mention that in the in the uh, the earlier part of the video so just keep that in mind so just hold down control and then left click to get rid of it and to place it in just go ahead and hold down uh, left click by itself you've also got to keep in mind that you can uh, place this stuff individually by unchecking paint objects and then just shift clicking and you can also scale this stuff so let me just go ahead and give you an example of that so with that done there what I can do is I can go ahead and hold down alt and then just drag it up and down in size to play around with that to be a little bit more precise so for example if I wanted to place these really precisely that is essentially what I would do just go ahead and shift click and make them really really carefully and then just you know control uh, click to get rid of any uh, overhang so I'm just going to go ahead and create another category now uh, to add in some trees as I mentioned earlier. Uh, just go ahead and right click uh, add new category uh, as I, I will now. Right click add new category, name it whatever you want, uh, make sure it's relevant for the sake of organization. Once you've done that uh, just go ahead and add a new object and then just find whatever your second object is going to be in this case it's going to be a tree for me so I'm just going to go ahead and get some river trees in here select the first one uh, select that and I can go ahead and paint this individually uh, or uh, sorry or I can paint this uh, you know uh, loads and loads of them now I don't necessarily want loads of these so I'm just going to turn the brush size down just want to have a couple here and there so I'm going to place these individually so uncheck that shift click shift click shift click you know and so on and so forth we could play around with some of the settings for size variation and so on and so forth uh, but I'm not necessarily going to need to do that as of right now uh, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over in this video, feel free to skip back if you couldn't quite follow along. Thanks for watching, comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.